All right, everybody, welcome back to the Jones Zone. And today we're going to be getting into the sons of God and the Nephilim. Now, the sons of God are first mentioned in Genesis chapter 6. And here it reads, Now it came to pass, when the men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. There were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Okay, so let's take a close look at that part where it says, The sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. Now, now, there are many people who seem to be led by this to think that the sons of God are fallen angels. And there does appear to be some scripture to support this in Jude. Verses 6 and 7 where it reads, And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, in a similar manner to these, have given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Okay, so here it's speaking about the angels and how they went after strange flesh, guys. Uh, my interpretation of strange flesh is homosexuals and animals. Uh, it's said here that angels have the capacity or the desire to engage in sexual activity. But this shouldn't come across as some kind of shocking mystery because demons do this on a regular basis. And demons, as you know, are fallen angels. But there is a caveat here. And that is simply uh, that this verse doesn't actually say that angels can reproduce with women. It's implying that only that they can engage in sexual immorality. Again, uh, succubus, which are an unclean spirit of lust, can sexually attack humans. This is a very real thing, and they do this by causing dreams, which then cause their human victims to have uh, orgasms. Now, despite them doing this, you'll never find anything biblical uh, or anything biblically canon about demons impregnating people, let alone people in modern times saying demons can impregnate them. You'll never, you'll never stumble across anything like that. And it's because demons and fallen angels are spirits who cannot impregnate humans. And I'll back this up with scripture. Okay, and this is going to be your Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 and 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. There you go. It is written that we wrestle not against flesh, but spiritual hosts, angels, and demons are purely spiritual beings, and they cannot mate with humans. But then you have those that say, well, they can take human form, though. And this is true. Uh, angels can certainly do this, but because um, they, they have the support of God. But when we're talking about fallen angels, when they do this, they're taking on a spiritual body, and it's uh, illusionary. It doesn't have all of the functions of a real organic body. And that's the difference. Okay, now the title Sons of God is used to refer to both angels and humans. In Job, chapter 38, verse 7, God speaks to Job about the uh, creation and the foundation of the world, as it says here, when the morning stars, which are a cast of angels, sang together, and all of the sons of God shouted for joy. Sons of God are angels here. But in Hebrews, chapter 1, uh, verse 5, it it's written here, For which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? Which implies that the Son of God is Jesus, but his followers are also the sons of God, which we see in uh, Luke chapter 20, verse 36, where it reads, Nor can they die anymore, for they are equal to the angels and are the sons of God, being sons of the resurrection. So there you have it. Humans are also referred to as the sons of God. Okay, so with that being said, the sons of God in Genesis 6 are not fallen angels. They're humans when we're looking at context. Guys, it's all a matter of context. 
And now this brings us uh, to the giants who are also the sons of God. Remember, there were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. So there were giants in those days that they came into the daughters of men. And afterward, meaning their children are also giants. These are ancient antediluvian humans we're talking about, guys. All right, so let's take a look at 2 Samuels, chapter 21, verse 16, where it reads, Then Ishbi Benab, who was one of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose, the weight of whose bronze spear was 300 shekels, who was bearing a new sword, thought he could kill David. Okay, so this verse right here is telling you that we're dealing with giant human beings of flesh and blood. This is not some metaphor for something else. This is real. Okay, but uh, why are they so big? It's because they are the descendants of the giants of old and the children of Seth, son of Adam. And they are first to be called the sons of God in antediluvian times when men lived, lived not in, but still near the Garden of Eden. Remember, and the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. Adam lived to be 930 years old, and his son Seth lived to be 912. So there's your reason for the giantism. These men had extremely long lifespans due to their generational proximity to Adam and the Garden of Eden and the Tree of Life, which afforded them the opportunity to eat and nourish themselves beyond the levels humans do in our time. That Coupled with the, I'm going to get science here, but the oxygen-rich atmosphere of pre-flood times would have ensured men could live to grow up to about nine, and maybe even ten feet tall. And I'm talking a healthy, lean nine feet tall, not the kind that we see with deformations we see in the giants of our time. Okay, so were the Nephilim real? Yes. But were they actually the descendants of fallen angels? No. They are anti-Diluvian humans. And I'll leave a few more Sons of God references here if you'd like to take a look for yourself. Alright guys, so that's all I have for you. Thank you for stepping into the Jones Zone. And you have a blessed day.